Today, I want to challenge your perspective on the future of artificial intelligence and how this impacts your grandparents. No doubt, AI is everywhere. AI dictates your Spotify playlist. AI algorithms decide if you get into the college of your choice. And AI is feared by your grandparents. I want to show you how to change this last fact because it will have a profound effect on their longevity. Because here's what I know about your grandparents. They love you. They admire your tech literacy and they desperately want your help. And boy, do they need it. 10 minutes from now, your perspective will be challenged. You will have a deeper understanding on the future of artificial intelligence and you will have a no tech takeaway that will significantly improve the way your grandparents relate to AI. You'll also have a better understanding of the different types of AI and how important your personal impact is on what has been called the most valuable tool on the planet. Are you ready? First, I need to confess something to you. When the event organizers asked me to speak on AI, I was hesitant. You see, I'm not an expert on AI. However, I am an expert on teaching your grandparents the tech skills they need to excel in today's world. And if I can impart my methods to you, that's a hesitancy I can overcome. You see, all day I work alongside your Nana and Papa. I love hearing about your accomplishments. I don't mind hearing about their knees and their endless computer problems. You see, I grew up with my Nana and Papa. They were always there for my family, instilled lasting values in me. And because of them, I have a deep love and admiration for older adults. I think they're the best people. And I know they're suspicious, they're leery, and they're cautious about the ever-increasing presence of artificial intelligence. How will AI impact them? This is best understood in three categories. The first one is massive amounts of data, now more than ever before. The second, within algorithms, mainly written by computer scientists. And the third one is within computational power. First, let's talk about the massive data. The massive data is used to program robots. These robots adapt to moods. They sense vocal changes and they even track habits. They're helping older adults right now. They shine when you come into a room. They ask, how are you? They interact with you. They remember how you were feeling yesterday and they ask if you're feeling any better today. And as technology develops, the robots will too. The domestic assistants, they'll be weird at first. Your grandparents won't trust them. They'll be suspicious of their presence. And as your grandparents age, they'll begin to rely on them. They'll need them to do these everyday routine tasks because they'll lose dexterity in their hands and their eyesight will diminish and they'll need them to do things like replace batteries and hearing aids and see which pill needs to be taken. You're going to show them and you're going to work alongside them to set up medication reminders and to do other things like show them that it can help them make an omelet. Eventually, these humanoids, they will become their long-term companions and that will allow your grandparents to live on their terms safer and longer than ever. These same robots will be in hospitals, found preparing patient rooms, transporting deliveries and restocking medical supplies. You'll find them directing visitors and patients while freeing up medical personnel to provide compassionate care. Next, algorithms. The future of artificial intelligence points to meeting anticipatory needs with algorithms. Right now, when you search for something on Amazon, the next time you log on, alternatives and suggestions appear. Well, in the future, deliveries will just arrive 
based on anticipatory shipping patterns. Now this will be frightening, it's weird, it's enough to make Papa feel like Alexa is spying on him. You can help them to realize the benefits. They're not gonna have to write everything down every time they run out of batteries or detergent. Another form of algorithm destined for refinement is within fall prevention. About 36 million falls are reported among older adults each year, resulting in more than 32,000 deaths. And falls are predicted by changes in gait, decreased stride length and speed. If you can help your grandparents embrace algorithmic infrared sensor technology, not to spy on them, but to keep them safer at home. Let's talk about number three, computational power. Computational power is undeniably why artificial intelligence has become so powerful and versatile as it is today. Industries need specialized processors to enable the efficient processing of AI. Applications and modeling and inference in industries like healthcare heavily rely on these chips for delivering intelligence. Medical advances such as 3D bioprinting will drastically change the way surgeons replace hips and knees and joints. Advances in radiology will impact chronic diagnoses and your grandparents will recover faster from medical related issues, living longer and overcoming chronic pain more easily. You can prepare them for this by guiding them through patient portals, helping them finesse telemedicine appointments and learning to trust it because it will benefit them. Well, now you know what the future of artificial intelligence holds for your grandparents. You know what they can expect, but do you know how you can support them the most? It's the opposite of what I see well-meaning family members doing. And it doesn't matter if you're 15 or 55. Here's what I see needs to be adopted the most. When Grammy asks for your help on her phone next time, rather than doing the takeaway and taking it out of her hands, I need you to consider showing her in a compassionate, teachable approach. And this is something that artificial intelligence cannot do for her. This is something that I'm even tempted to do with my own folks and something I've witnessed my own teens doing. And I know we all lose patience with those we love the most. So consider this. You recently learned to drive, right? And did your parents just hand you the keys and say, here you go? No. No way, you had to abide by certain restrictions. You applied for a permit. Your permit wasn't valid until you took that driver training class. You had to practice. You had to sit alongside a parent or an adult over 25 and that person had to sit next to you to guide you. And there are serious consequences for mishandling a car. There was a lot of learning time. There was a lot of skills time. And there are also serious consequences for poor cyber hygiene, right? Like identity theft and elder fraud. So rather than just wrangle the wheel away from her next time, I need you to consider the teachable takeaway. And like the futuristic AI, you'll have to number one, apply the data. What's her mood? Listen to the tone of her voice and determine if she's able to learn more. Number two, fully anticipate and pace yourself that you may have to repeat these steps again the next time. In fact, you can pretty much bank on it. You will need to show her how to do uploading the photos again. And number three, process the teachable moment into steps that she'll be able to refer to when you're not there. Remember, your grandparents are not dinosaurs, they're scholars. They learn differently than you do. They're not of the YouTube generation where you just watch a few videos and now you know it all. They went to college. They took notes. They typed essays. They wrote dissertations. 
their traditional learners. And that means starting with the basics. When they have a basic foundation of the topic, they're empowered to build upon their knowledge. And when writing down the notes and the simple steps for say, accessing her patient portal or using her domestic assistant, then she's confident to learn on her own. Now that's the future of AI and how it relates to your grandparents. It starts with you helping them accept, adopt and adapt by merging the less tech world they grew up with and the tech filled future that'll assist them in all their matters, big and small. Thank you.